Christmas. On, on behalf of Pastor Jim and Jen and the whole staff, we welcome you. I'm Pastor Paul. Our mission is sharing God's unconditional love, justice, and extravagant welcome. Special welcome to our siblings in the LGP, LGTP, yeah, let me start again, LGTQ plus community and all allies who are tired of hate. Yeah, you might want to edit that part out, Pastor Jim, when I'm doing that. There is room at the end for you, for me, for all of us. The real you. When you and I are real, together we blanket this area, this world with love. God comes to us this day as a vulnerable child, inviting us to expose our vulnerabilities. God comes reaching out to the furthest corners of life, challenging us to stretch out with new life, to reach people who, who feel as if they're in a dead end. God comes stirring us to examine all that is sacred while providing us the opportunity for attitude adjustments. God comes, comes to you, comes to me. Just a few words of announcements. We encourage you to check our church calendar for all meetings. Our newsletter, Palm Leaf, should hit your email this Thursday. You can always check our website out for the latest information. After worship, we will not have our regular worship, our fellowship time in King Hall, but we do have birthday cake in the narthex. I, I don't know if it's devil's food or angel's food. Um, I guess it depends on whether you're on uh, Santa's naughty or nice list. <laughs> So you can have your cake and you can eat it too. We do it, yes, yes. Please note that the church office will be closed on Monday and Tuesday this next week. Yes! <laughs> we wish you a very Merry Christmas. Let's worship God together. Good morning. It is good to see each one of you here this morning. We're in for several Christmas delights and treats today, but the first one comes from y'all. So stand to your feet as you're able, Emmanuel.
statues in the cold, washed in moonlight blue and gold. Mary's babe in plastic hay, quiet wonder on her face. Mary, you look so serene, far too pretty, much too clean. We might think we know you well, but what stories would you tell of all the dirt and dust and shame every burning labor pain and as I turn to
Jennifer, you gift us all the time with your ability on the keyboard. Thank you for being real and singing. That was a, that was a blessing. Our scripture lesson today comes from the gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching o'er silent flocks by night, Behold, they out the heavens, there shone a holy light. Go, tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go, tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. Now those shepherds feared and trembled when low above this the earth rang out an angel chorus that hailed the Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Christ is born. Now down in lowly manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent out salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountains over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ is born happy birthday jesus What a blessing, Reverend Ruth. Thank you very, very, very much. Would you please pray with me? May the words of my mouth and meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I had a clergy friend who was a Jeopardy champion back in the day. It paid his way through seminary, and I've always thought about trying out. But my worry, my, my worry, instead of important academic categories like the Synoptic Gospels, 1970s baseball, or cacti blossoms, my strengths, I'd have categories like fashion and reality TV and celebrity trivia. A few years ago, Wendy did try out for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and made it to the second round before getting booted off the application list. Well, if any of us were on a game show and the questions were all about the Christmas story, I, I think we'd be able to answer because we've been paying attention. Yes, mother of Jesus, Mary, final answer. Abiding in the field? Shepherds, final answer. Gifts from the wise ones, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, final answer. The characters and the story is played out, and they leave us with a warm and fuzzy feeling. But I also suspect that you know the further you go on these game shows, the harder the questions. These are questions you can't skip or ask the audience and they don't make us feel warm and comfortable. You see, scratch below the surface of any Christmas card image to get the first Christmas morning, and you're going to uncover greed, danger, genocide. So how can we get Christmas to really work in our lives today and throughout the whole new year? The most popular spot, it seems, for people to get well, answers to questions is on the internet these days. And wouldn't you know it, it includes a site of how Christmas works. It's a one-stop shop for all your questions about Christmas. Now, in game, in game show style, it would be question, 
Why do people give presents on Christmas Day? Answer, what is kindness, duty? And because, well, they want gifts in return. <laughs> Question, well, is December 25th really the day that Jesus was born? Answer, well, probably not. Shepherds wouldn't be out in the fields this time of year. Then there's that mistletoe mystery. What does that have to do with the Christmas story? Answer, absolutely nothing, but I want it hanging in my house, that's for sure. <laughs> the point is, a cultural and religious holiday like Christmas, it takes years. It takes centuries of formation until it becomes the event it is today, enshrined in the global consciousness in one way or another. Christmas works because these traditions and legends and customs that have evolved over time work. So is there a way for Christmas not to work? Christmas almost didn't happen. Dig beneath the peaceful picture of Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus and you're going to find surprises. Look closely at the Gospels. You'll be stunned by the danger and violence that permeates the original Christmas story. You want to talk about death and fear? You can start right there. Christmas should not have happened. For example, you don't take your pregnant wife, put her on a mule, and lug her off on a 120-mile trip and live to tell about it. <laughs> Second, you arrange for lodging. You don't just hope there's going to be room. And people wonder why Joseph disappeared in the story. Hmm. <laughs> Kidding, of course, of course. And then there's this child born in a manger. Think about that. That's where the animals ate. You can think about it as your dog or cat bowl. Wow, how did kids survive back then? The answer, a lot of them did not. Jesus did. Then these, there are these wise guys who hit a roadblock as they attempt to gain access to Jesus. Sure, the star in the sky is a big help as they, as they journey to Jerusalem, but once they hit the capital city, they run into King Herod, who's already working on an exit strategy in case this new king isn't found and killed. To make sure, scores of children are killed in what is today known as the slaughter of the innocents. So Christmas almost didn't happen back then, and it often doesn't come off for us either. We go through the motions, the presents, the shopping, the food, and so on, but that's not Christmas, that's the holidays. Like the wise ones, we have to take a detour around dangers. If we're going to gain access to Jesus, we're going to have to be challenged to find a new way. The wise ones protected Jesus by evading the expectations of Herod, and we should follow that path. For Christmas to work, we need to remember that Christmas now, as, it, as then, is a dangerous business. It's dangerous because it evokes dreams and hopes. Christmas isn't easy, and in fact, it can be emotionally, spiritually costly because it demands that we put the hopes and fears of all the years to work. It calls on us to give muscle to our aspirations and dreams, and that's not easy. But if we can do that, Christmas works. Christmas works when we shatter the false gods of materialism and the idols of consumerism and the demands of self-importance. When Christ is the center of our daily living, we are helped as we face tests and trials and temptations. When we honor God and not the American culture of Christmas, then holiness of Christmas, ironically, really works. Christmas works and becomes holy when we take Jesus, when we let Jesus take us into unfamiliar territory, another road, a nursing home, a neighbor's home, 
or something even more bizarre like an attitude adjustment, a generous spirit, getting along with the family, lending a helping hand. Mike Iaconelli tells a story about a guy who really wasn't into church or God. He went along with it because, well, his spouse drug him and it made his life a little easier. One day, the pastor of the church needed a, a bus driver to transport the youth of the church over to an old folks' home. The youth were going to lead a worship service once a month on Sunday afternoon, and, and they needed a driver, and the man was voluntold, so he unenthusiastically agreed. Now, the first time he sat in the back of the chapel at the care facility, the youth did their thing, singing and talking and reading scripture and praying. He just was waiting for it to be over, thinking, what did I do to deserve this? When suddenly a man in a wheelchair pulled up beside him, grabbed his hand, he didn't know what to do, so he just let the man hold his hand. Now, the next month, the same thing happened. He drove, he sat in the back, the man came up, grabbed his hand. So the next time, the next month, he wedged himself into the corner of the room in the back. But it happened again. The man wheeled up and reached out and grabbed his hand. And it happened the next month, and the next month, and the next month. And then suddenly, suddenly it stopped. The man was nowhere to be seen. So the guy asked the, the nursing home staff about the old man. They said he had recently died, but that his family was at the facility cleaning out his room. Now something moved the, the, the man to go down the hallway and find the family. As he tried to explain who he was and express his sorrow, he really wasn't good with words. He, he didn't know what to say. After his stumbling, bumbling attempt to, to tell the story about the monthly youth service, about hand-holding, the daughter of the man interrupted him and said, Oh, you're Jesus! The man said, No, 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 I drive the bus. No, oh, you're Jesus. My dad talked about the service when the kids would come, that Jesus would come and hold his hand every time. It meant the world to him. Dietrich Bonhoeffer answers the question of who will celebrate Christmas correctly this way. Whoever finally lays down all power, all honor, all reputation, all vanity, all arrogance, all individualism beside the manger. Christmas works when you and I realize that we are the hands of Jesus to others. Or as we say around here, we're the palms of Jesus. When we are the palms of Jesus to others, Christmas happens Christmas actually works. And yes, that is my final answer. Thanks be to God. Amen. The family hiding from the storm Found no place at the keeper's door was for this a child was born to save a world so cold and hollow trust in a being town they did not know that lying in a manger low a savior king who had no hope had come to heal our sorrows. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write His story?
Shepherds counting sheep at night Do not fear the glory light You are precious in His sight God has come to raise the lowly Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart for God to write His story? You can come as you are, but it may set you apart when you make room in your heart and trade your dreams for his glory make room in your heart make room in your heart mother holds the promised light Every wrong will be made right. The road is straight, the burdens light. For in God's hands, God holds tomorrow. Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? Is there room in your heart? you are, but it may set you apart when you make room in your heart and trade your dreams for his glory. Make room in your heart, make room in your heart, make room in come to an opportunity to pray together, recognizing that some of us come with hearts that are full and joyful. Some come with hearts full of concern, hurting. Emmanuel, God is with you no matter what your feelings are today. God is present. Let us pray together. Holy child of Bethlehem, you are the hope of the world, the song of the angels, the treasure of our hearts and the glory of God among us. You have called us to worship, to work and witness in this community and the world so that all peoples may know the wonders of your love. Holy God, as we hear and heed that call, use us to live out those wonders in new ways so that kindness prevails, justice flourishes, and peace reigns. Create in us clean hearts and right spirits for the sharing of the good news of great joy, praising God, bringing unity and peace on earth. 
where there is sickness. Use us to bring about healing. Where there is strife, use us to bring about harmony. Where there is hatred and injustice, use us to bring about goodwill and equity. Where there is so much need for your guidance and wisdom, call us into unceasing prayer for one another and for our community, even in these moments of silence. And now let us pray together in one voice, using the words Emmanuel taught us to pray, saying, Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, what kind of birthday party would it be if there weren't gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh? Or as we know them here at the Church of the Palms, our time our talent, and our treasure. As our ushers wait on us, may we give of our whole self. Will you pray with me? There are so many things to be thankful for today, O God. Receive these gifts of our gratitude for your love made flesh. May they become God with us for all the world. May they breathe hope, peace, joy, and love back into a world that needs a sense of your wonder. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Well, we have come to an opportunity to take this love hope, peace, joy that we've been talking about into the world after cake, of course. (laughs) So stand as you are able to receive this benediction and then we're going to sing. Let us go from this place proclaiming that we have seen the glory of God, believing that there is a light that shines in the darkness which the darkness cannot overcome. And may the love of the Creator, the joy of the Spirit, and the peace of the Christ child be with you this Christmas day and forevermore. Amen? Amen. Let's sing. child will breathe.